Shifting gears to talk real quick about a fluorescence thermal shift. Basically, this is a way in which you can measure how kind of like stable proteins are, how sturdy, how well folded they are. If you think about heat, well, what that's really thinking, talking about is kind of the energy that molecules have to wiggle. The sturdier the thing, the protein is held together, the more wiggling that the individual amino acids can kind of do before the protein kind of like pops apart. And so the interactions that hold together a protein, a lot of them are hydrophobic interactions. So these are interactions where basically the water around the protein, it excludes the protein and so the protein folds up. If the protein unfolds, well then it exposes all those hydrophobic parts, all those parts that the water wants to avoid. This dye, however, the Cipro orange, it likes those hydrophobic parts. And so if you expose the hydrophobic parts of a protein, then the dye is going to bind to it and then it'll fluoresce. If the dye is just like floating around in solution, the water is going to quench the fluorescence. It's going to steal that fluorescence and so you're not going to see the fluorescence. What you can do, therefore, is take a protein and start heating it up. The protein is going to be initial. If it's really sturdy, it's going to like wiggle, 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 but it'll stay stuck together. Eventually, however, the protein is going to like, it'll um, unfold. And so it'll unfold and then all that dye is going to bind and you'll see fluorescence. But then what's going to happen is that the protein unfolds so much, all the copies of the protein are unfolded and they start sticking to one another instead of sticking to the dye. That is the protein starts aggregating. Now, when the protein's bound to other protein, instead of being bound to the dye, well, the dye's free again. And while the dye's free again, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see fluorescence. So if what you do is you take a protein and you mix it with this dye, and then you basically make a temperature gradient with the PCR, QPCR machine, you make it go on a gradient. As the gradient heats up, the protein starts unfolding. It starts unfolding and you reach like a peak where it's most unfolded. You get the highest fluorescence. We're not really most unfolded, but you get the highest fluorescence. And then the protein starts to aggregate. When the protein aggregates, remember, it's taking the spots that the dye would have bound to. So the dye is now stuck to being quenched by the water. And so you see it a decrease of fluorescence. The point at which you're kind of like halfway to the top is the TM, the melting temperature. The temperature at which you're halfway to the maximum fluorescence, or you can think of like half of the protein being unfolded. If the protein was really sturdy, that temperature is going to be higher. And if this protein wasn't um, held together that tightly, it'll be lower. Sometimes the protein, you can like test um, different proteins. Like if you make a mutation, does it affect the stability of the protein? Maybe it makes it so that it unfolds faster, in which case you get like unfolds easier. So you get a lower TM. Maybe it sturdifies things. So you get a higher TM. Even the same protein, maybe when it's in a, a, a different pH, so we're, test, we're gonna test like pH, different pHs and see how that affects stability. As well as you can test things like binding to a ligand, so a small molecule. Sometimes that can kind of introduce more bonds that are holding the protein tighter together because now they're held on to this thing as well as being held on to just like other parts of itself. And so you can use all of these things to do things like measure protein stability and even measure kind of the binding in some cases. In order to figure out the TM, that point at which you're halfway to the top, one of the easiest ways is to take the derivative, to take the slope of this line. So you see that you kind of like, it goes positive and then it goes negative. And as it's going positive, it kind of goes faster and then it starts slowing down. And so you get a derivative, you get like a peak in your derivative and then you can graph that and then you, that will tell you um, kind of your TM. And so thankfully this software does it for you. So we're using basically this Cipro orange, um, this dye, it comes as like super duper concentrated, then you dilute it. You use just like a QP PCR machine in the FRET settings. I don't, so FRET is for resonance energy transfer and it's like one, you like something, shine, you shine light, something um, emits light at one wavelength then gets stolen at another wavelength. And I don't know like what the heck this machine is, the settings are for FRET. They like don't tell you, so it makes me mad. Um, but anyway, if you're using the Cipro Orange, use the FRET setting. Um, basically this machine, it's the same machine that you use for QPCR, except you use different settings for QPCR. Um, but you want to use like white tubes with the clear tops, these like optically clear tops. 
the white tubes are gonna make it so that it is great for like measuring the light and it's not like escaping and stuff into other wells and all that bad stuff. And then you wanna make sure it's a clear top so that the machine can go and take its pretty pictures. And so what's gonna happen is basically throughout the run, you're going to ramp up the temperature and it'll take the, um, it'll ramp up the temperature great, um, gradually and take pictures as it goes. Um, and then you can export the data and plot it and all that good stuff, find the derivative, voila. And so, yeah, so this is called a fluorescence thermal shift, um, a thermal shift um, differential scan or um, differential scanning uh, fluorimetry. Um, and basically there's different names for it, but it's one of the simplest ways that you can do to kind of measure the proteins like held togetherness, stuckness. So the lower the TM, the less kind of like sturdy, the weaker it's kind of like held together. The stronger, the, uh, the higher the TM, the more kind of like solid your protein is. It's like a rock. And when it's a rock, it's high, the dye can't bind. And when the dye can't bind, then the water steals the fluorescence. When the dye gets to bind to the hydrophobic regions of the protein, when it unfolds, when the protein unfolds, then you get the fluorescence. But when too much protein's unfolded and there's not enough dye and everything, the proteins just stick together, the dye gets kicked out, and then, well, back to the water where, yeah, quench that signal.